I'm Stelianos Ioannis Mimilakis, a PhD candidate under the Maxinet project, currently hosted by Fraunhofer IDMP in Ilmenau, Germany. And as the title suggests, I'm going to talk about jazz, deep neural networks, source separation, and remixing. So the outline of my talk consists of five points, an introduction to the frameworks of audio mixing, where the source separation kicks in, what's the challenges. After, go, after that, I'm going to introduce the objectives and challenges of the current work, uh, followed by the technical details of the proposed system, how did we train the deep neural networks, what kind of features, representations, etc., we used. If we have time, I'm going to play back some results out of the neural networks, consisting of historical old jazz recordings and tracks from the multi-track uh, testbed by Tim Murray. And finally, uh, conclusions and future improvements of the current system concludes my talk. So mixing in a nutshell, what would you do? You just put a bunch of, a set of audio multitracks into the production process, which mainly consists of editing, mixing, you know better than me, for sure, and you get a mix. However, there are two very important parameters. One is the acoustic conditions, mainly hardware, like monitors, the acoustic environment that you're monitoring the full procedure, and of course, excessive human effort in terms of experience, knowledge, of course, music taste, and these two parameters are quite influencing with the actual target, which is a good mix. So since the mixing is governed by very basic signal processing operations, the only thing that we have to find out is the correlation between our perception and the audit tracks, which helps us in the decision making. And in fact, there are quite some really cool frameworks out there about uh, for automated mixing, which actually introduce another procedure over here, which is which I call signal processing mining optimization. So in that case, the audio multitracks will be fed again to the same process. However, the decisions now are going to be made by the this thingy over here, which actually also accepts the audio multitracks. So in that case, we'll actually feed the, into a process which will do some basic signal processing operations, will compute MFCCs, filter banks, you know. Then afterwards, we're gonna take some statistical observations which are fed into optimization or machine learning process, which will help you in the decision making. And in fact, it works quite, co quite good. However, the human effort from the side of the engineering of the reproducing has, has been shifted towards into the selection of the algorithms and techniques that you're gonna use. For example, why MFCCs? Why the standard deviation of the first coefficient MFCC? Why spectral flag, flags? Well, anything. Then it comes to uh, what kind of le machine learning approach should I use? Do SVMs do make any difference? Any perceptual difference? In the, in the case that we have missing data, where actual observations about the multitracks are missing, it's even more exaggerated in terms of uh, additional human effort. What will you do? In that case, we'll probably have a really bad mix and we'll get better mix. And we also don't have the audio multitracks. So we're introducing another process named source separation and from which we derive tracks or source estimations, which are very big given to these two automated frameworks and then we get a better mix. However, once again, who chooses the, the source separation algorithm, the representation, if it's informed, is additional human effort. So the objectives of this work is to minimize, or even probably eliminate, but that's not possible, the, the human effort. We would like to give power to the data. So actually, we want to train a system which by itself will do the feature extraction in order to solve, to solve a specific problem which in our case is the source separation and automated mixing. We are gonna also incorporate deep learning approaches to do that. And as a proof of concept, we'll be constrained to historic and old jazz recordings for which we don't have any prior experience about the uh, original music sources and mixing conditions, etc. We will be also constrained with respect to audio source separation to solo and background music estimation. And as a matter of fact for effects modeling, we'll be also focused on a very uh, simple approach, which is just a gain, like a volume, a simple gain uh, function and panoramic position. 
So challenges, well, mainly two. We would like to our system to generalize, generalize on arbitrary music compositions, and only the historic jazz. And of course, we would like to have natural sounding results. So a very brief overview of the system. Of course, it's offline, it takes some time to compute all this stuff and actually separates and remixes the estimated sources back using deep neural networks. All the operations are based in the time frequency domain, a much more meaningful representation to do all this operation. We're gonna be using a short time Fourier transformation. I'm gonna give some details in the next slide. It incorporates two trained deep neural networks. One will actually make estimations of the solo source observing only a mixture, and the second will just derive a vector of probabilities, which when it's given to a decoder, like a small handbook uh, codebook, it will give you the values for gain and panoramic positions that you want to apply to the time domain signals. Yeah, so the, code, the aforementioned codebook is handcrafted. Unfortunately, we're still doing it by ourselves. And it also incorporates a generalized linear filtering with fractional power spectrograms in order to estimate the other source that which we didn't have any prior information, which is the background music. So as you will see in the details, so we have a two-channel waveform, STFT analysis is using a Bartlett symmetric windowing function of 2049 samples. Our STFT is upsampling it, so we have, uh, so our resolving subbands is 2049 as well, including the DC and Nyquist frequency bins. From the complex representation, we don't mix to mono since our first observations about the solo was again in solo. We pass it through the unmixing DNN, so this procedure is simply a stacked matrix multiplications over the, the spectrogram. And the result of the spectrogram, uh, the result of the DNN, is also a magnitude spectrogram, denoted as XS. And this is the first estimation of the solo. In order to compute the background music, we get, uh, we drive X of S to an alpha process, which that means that we assume that the solo is being completely additive, an additive component into both channels, and we can estimate it, again, we can estimate it by raising to various uh, powers. This is the way that it comes from the fractional power spectrograms. And then with using like a small ratio of spectrograms, like in a typical Wiener case, we do have the estimations of the background music, which are then resynthesized. Furthermore, the estimation of the solo is being driven through also the remix in DNN, which is actually producing this vector of probabilities, which we later then decode, interpolate with respect to the time domain samples, and then we resynthesize the solo using its original phase, multiply it with its corresponding decoded values, sum it over, and then we have the output. So how do we, did we train that? So we had already some manual an annotations from a collection of uh, 40 full-length jazz recordings from various artists. They were mainly historic and old recordings. We split the data into two parts. So we had 20 for training the unmixing deep neural network and 20 for the remixing part, correspondingly. And for each recording, we had prior information which was manually labeled with respect to the fundamental frequency of the solo instrument, which in our case is the target instrument. We used an informed source operation algorithm to derive spectral estimates of the solo source, and then we just fed it into the system. With respect to the training, we've incorporated highway deep neural networks. They're more or less the same as the fully connected case. However, there is, there is one important uh, transformation property, which has another layer, forms like an a really simple attentional model. And we, we found it out that using a total amount of, total, total amount of five layers usually is a really good model to, for our purposes. For activation functions, we use the rectified linear units basically also known like half-wave rectifiers, which are pretty good for magnitude spectra. We use a learning rate of 1e to the minus 4. We did batch online training with a batch size of four time frames. No further pre-processing, no concatenations of time frames, just pure spectrogram into the deep neural network. As a target function, 
we had the spectral estimates of the solo source for each co corresponding recording. We minimize the Euclidean distance since the, our primal targets were resulted from a Gaussian process. And we fed it for 100 full iterations using the typical backpropagation algorithm and ADAM as an optimizer. So the remixing DNN, it follows the same pattern more or less. This time we needed fewer layers to solve or to derive some encoding, some encoded information about the linear gain in the panoramic directions. We use uh, both rectified linear units and softbox activation functions. This time the input is the estimated solo spectra of the rest 20 recordings. And the target function is this manually handcrafted um, codebook, which we created some annotations for the desired position and gain of the solo source. This time we minimized the cross entropy function, again for 100 epochs using the backpropagation algorithm and ADEM as an optimizer. So some results. So do you have like the original mixture? The estimated using the linear process, the generalized one. The estimated solo instrument by the deep neural network. mixed by a proposed system. In fact, it can generalize to modern recordings as well. Oh, that's an odd one, sorry. was the original mixture, the accompaniment. Solo instrument. The remixed. In fact, it can also recognize some synthesizers used. That was the original mixture, the estimated accompaniment. The estimated solo. the remixed version. As you may have realized, most of the times it just pushes down the solo instrument and slightly pans it away through the background, uh, another harmonic background music. And this is due to the fact that it was trained to do like that. Based on our uh, annotations and the data set that it was used for training, most of the historic old jazz recordings had really loud solos so that we want to get rid of or just, you know, want it somewhere else. So we proposed, like uh, I presented like a very uh, first approach to combine all source operation automatic mixing only with deep neural networks. The first approach to model such audio effects included this small trick with the encodings and the co uh, manually annotated codebook. Through unofficial listening tests, the desirable, perf uh, desirable performance was also achieved. Its generalization as well was quite impressive. There are, in the full manuscript, you can find actually some links to the source code and some uh, more audio examples that you could check out. And 
would like there are actually many feature improvements for such modeling. One is to introduce psychoacoustics into the optimization process. Of course, this lab is about audio, it should contain some human explicit information. We'd also like better uh, additivity models into the spectrogram estimations. And with respect to audio modeling, maybe it shouldn't be, the, uh, maybe we should just look over sequence models, taking into account some time dependencies, so we could actually model an audio effect directly from raw time domain waveform signals. Yeah, that's mainly it. Thank you very much for your attention and questions.